Hello everybody and welcome to Milestone Study. My name is Anusha and in this video we are going to talk about reading and writing fill in the blanks. If you are new to our channel don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video so that I know that I'm doing a great job. Comment anything below and we'll reply to your queries and your concerns. Also remember that you can use our website milestonestudy.com.au to practice all the necessary practice questions and take a mock test as well. For a free trial, please refer to the video that is linked below in the description. For all other class queries as well, you have our number in the description. Okay, now I'm already on the question type. You can go on to practice PTE, PT practice, and then on click on practice now. Or you can also go to dashboard where all the questions are listed, all the mock test numbers are listed. Um, there are also some free videos to watch, okay? Okay, now reading and writing FIB is our focus today, okay? Let's try and solve as many as we can as the time permits. Okay, now if you're a beginner, if you have never taken the PD test before, remember this is one of the questions in the reading section, which also contributes to the writing section, okay? Equal marks. So if you have three blanks here, you're getting three marks. And these three marks also go towards the writing section. So whoever is struggling in reading and writing, please make sure you improve this task. Now, what do you have to do? You have a text here. You have to click on the blank and choose whatever answer you feel like, okay? Depending, it, um, like, you know, you have to have good knowledge of English, grammar, vocabulary, collocations, uh, and contextual knowledge, okay? So let's try and solve this question now. First thing, remember the topic is not given, okay, in the exam, so don't rely on the topic. Oh, it's about environment, nothing like that, okay? The timer is ticking here. We are supposed to finish one task in 2 to 2.5 minutes. Lesser is always better. Now, the first question, read and understand. Does the environmental policy does not contribute to the profitability in any real sense at all? It's trying to compare environment with the profit of a company, yeah? That they're saying that they're not related. In practice, it is companies that are well organized and efficient or that are already comfortably profitable that have time to dash and police environmental policies. Okay, this is not polish. This is police. Uh, so we have to find a verb and all of these words are verbs. Okay, so it's not helping much to know the grammar rule. We are trying to look for a verb which has some relation with policies. There is a rule which says the subject has to match with the verb and the verb has to match with the object, okay? Because can I say I am eating a car? I can't because eat and car doesn't make any sense. They don't go well, okay? I am eating vegetables is fine. I'm eating burger is fine, but I cannot eat a car. If it was a monster or a dino or a you know, kung fu, whatever you call that, um, King Kong, something like that, then they can eat a car probably, but I cannot eat a car, okay? So the verb did not match here with the objects. So the same rule we apply here, what goes with the word policies? Can we cater a policy? Can we enlist a policy, enroll a policy, or establish a policy? Cater means to help, like, you know, catering services, um, help, okay? Help policies doesn't make sense. Enlist means make a list or category, that doesn't make sense. Uh, companies who are already well organized that have time to establish and police environmental policies. Okay, establish policy makes more sense. Policy is a set of rules. Yeah, you have a book where the rules are written. So we need to establish that. However, if profitable companies are the ones most likely to establish, wow, okay, we have another hint here, environmental best practice. I've already chosen the word, sorry guys, but let's have a look at these words, okay? Can we establish practice? Can we establish vocation, code, or revision? What can we establish? We cannot establish a code. We can write a code. We can decode a code, okay? Uh, vocation is like an occupation. We cannot establish occupation. We are talking about best practice, okay? And what goes along with best? Environmental best practice. 
Um, this is confusing cause with effect. It is not that environmental best practice, another hint, but that being profitable allows for something for the environment. So being profitable will help, allows for what for the environment? It's not that environmental best practice causes profitability, that you're not going to earn money by working on the environment, but that being profitable allows for concern for the environment. That means when you are profitable, when you have money in your pocket, then you can think about the environment. Before you have money, you're not going to think about the money, about, about the environment, okay? Once you have money in your pocket, then you can think of all the luxurious items, all the concerns about environment. So that's it. Let's check our answer. Bingo. So three by three, established practice and concern. Now, what methods did I use here? I used the verb and object method. I tried and uh, matched the verb with the object in both the cases, first and second. And then in the third one, I try to relate uh, with the context, okay? No grammar in this case. Let's do another one. Mm -hmm. Since the beginning of the financial crisis, so that means negative, as soon as you see the word financial crisis, there have been two principal dash. Now, obviously, when we say two, we need to find a plural word, okay? But unfortunately, in drop-down questions, we have plurals. Like All of the four options are plurals, yeah? So there have been two principal what for why so many banks made such disastrous decisions. So financial crisis, decisions are made disastrous, okay? So what are those two principles? Principle what? Principle debates, excuses, examples, or explanations. Now, the right answer would be ex explanations. And the reason is, if you look further, the first is structural. Regulators did not regulate. Institutions failed to dash. Rules and were either inadequate. And the second explanation is that. See? So this is the hint here. First explanation is this. Second explanation is this. So definitely the right answer is explanations. So read further before you conclude your answer, okay? There will be hints given. The first is structural. Regulators did not regulate. So everything negative. Institutions failed to dash as they should. Fail to use, fail to function, fail to stabilize, or fail to maintain. For the word use, stabilize, and maintain, these three verbs, okay? They are verbs. For these three verbs, we need an object. Without an object, just using the verb on itself, not enough, okay? For example, I say, I use. What, is, what does that mean? What, what do you use? The question is there, isn't it? What do you use? I stabilize. What do you stabilize? I stabilize the company. I stabilize the content, country. Yeah, I stabilize the rules. I maintain. I maintain what? I maintain records. See? So all these three words are demanding an object. But function is a word which does not demand an object. Like I function. I function means I work. Function can be used as a verb. Okay, and this does not require an object. So that's why the right answer will be function. The reason, there is no object after the blank. If there was an object, then you could have chosen use, stabilize, or maintain. Okay, this is a little bit of advanced vocabulary, advanced rule. Remember everybody who is targeting uh, seven and higher, if you have to look for a verb, see what object they are using in the back. If there is no object, then you cannot use words like use because you have, I use a phone. I'm using your phone, isn't it? So we need that object. Here is no object, so the right answer is function. They fail to function means they fail to work as they should. Rules and guidelines were inadequate, negative. The second explanation is that Wall Street was dash. Okay, so Wall Street was rough, rampant, incompetent, and irresponsible. Now, in this case, maybe you don't know the meaning of rampant. Let it be, okay? We don't need to know everything in the world. So, but we need to know the context. So, what are they saying further? That the traders and investors did not know enough that they made extravagant bets without dash the consequence, okay? They did not have enough knowledge. So what word describes not having enough knowledge? The right answer is incompetent. Incompetent means they are not able to compete because they don't have enough 
information or enough knowledge. Okay, here you go. It's a negative word. All of them are negative word, but out of them, the second phrase is explaining the first phrase. Then they made extra vagant bets without knowing the consequences. So what word describes knowing? Understanding. Okay. Consequences means the effects. They did not know the effects. They did not have enough knowledge about trading and investing. Okay. So the right answer is understanding. Bingo. Okay. Got four by four. Let's do another one. Crime prevention has a long history in Australia and in other parts of the world. Prevention, prevention, positive, okay? In all societies, people have tried to dash themselves and those close to them from assaults and other abuses. Protection, something like protect, okay? We want that word because people have tried to protect themselves and others from the assaults. Every time someone locks the door to their house or their car, they practice dash prevention. So what are they practicing? A form of prevention. Because if you are locking the door, that means you are preventing someone else to come inside your house or your car. Okay, So you are practicing a form of prevention. That means a type of prevention. Most parents want their children to learn to be law-abiding. Law-abiding means you're following the law and not spend extended periods of their lives in prison. Nobody wants you to go to prison, yeah? In this country, at least, so we are talking about Australia, in this country, at least most, dash, which tense are they using? They're using present tense. And which ones are the present tense? Succeeded is past, was succeeded is past. So either has succeeded or succeed. Most, most means plural, okay? We cannot say most has. We have to say most have, most succeed. Present simple tense. Only a small minority of young people become recidivist offenders. Recidivist means something, somebody who re-offends, okay? You can also look at your look at the dictionary here by double clicking. Okay, one who falls back into prior habits, especially criminal habits. So that means who is repeating the offend, yeah? Recidivist. So double click and you will find the meaning. In a functioning society, crime prevention is part of everyday life. While preventing can be all pervasive at the grassroots, dash is oddly neglected in mass media and political discourses. Okay. Uh, here we have an interesting rule. While is used to contradict, okay? Like but, it's contradicting ideas. So prevention can be all pervasive at the grassroots. Dash is oddly neglected in. What is neglected in mass media and political discourses? So prevention can be all pervasive at the grassroots. It is oddly neglected in mass media and political discourses. Now, why? The right answer is it. Why not which and what or as? The reason is while uses two clauses, okay? Now, what's the difference between a clause and a phrase? If you understand that, it will be easy to understand this line. It's a pure grammar question. Clauses are sentences. Let me write an example question sentence here. So you write, I drive a car, that is one clause, okay? I eat lunch, I or I have lunch, I had, I had my lunch. This is another clause, okay? Sometimes you combine the sentences, isn't it? I like you because you are kind. So such kind of sentences, these have two clauses. One is I like you. Another is you are kind. So I like you is one clause. You are kind is another clause. Similarly, the word while has to join two clauses. Example, while you are kind, your sister is not. So two things happening. One person is kind, another person is not kind. You're joining two clauses together. See here, after a comma, we need another clause. Starts with, starts a different sentence, okay? A complete sentence. So your sister is a subject. We need a subject here. Which is not a subject? 
what is not a subject in here? It is the subject, okay? All right, so when we are looking at the conjunction rules, we need to see how many clauses they are going to use, how many uh, subjects are there, verbs are there. Next, when politicians talk back, a radio host and newspaper editorialists pontificate. I don't know the meaning of pontificate. So I'm going to double click when we are practicing, not in the exam. Okay. In the exam, we cannot do double clicking and check the meaning. The status term of office of a pontiff or pontifex. Okay. That did not help me a lot, but it's somebody's status. Editorial, editorialists pontificate about crime and possible dash possible what comes in my mind first is res remedies okay remedies means help when politicians talk back radio hosts and newspaper editors pontificate about crime and possible remedies uh-huh it is comparatively rare for them to mention prevention so remedies means uh, simply solutions okay so this feels best here we go. Let's check. Yeah, I got it right. So, number one was easy. Number two, uh, we had to know the term. A form of means a type of. Succeed, we had to know which tense they are using. It, we had to know the use of while, okay, and the clauses, difference between clauses. Remedies, we just needed to know uh, that it meant solution and it just went with crime and solution. Okay, possible remedies is a collocation. Okay, let's do one more. Hmm. International trade allows countries to expand their markets and access goods and services that dash may not have been available domestically. When we are doing trading internationally, when we are trading internationally, we are trying to expand our market and we are trying to gain or buy goods and services that are not available in our country. That otherwise may not have been available domestically okay as a dash of international trade the market is more efficient as a result this ultimately leads to more competitive pricing and brings dash products to consumers brings newer all novel now novel and newer are the same okay and all products are not going to be brought the cheaper products. Why cheaper? Because the market is more efficient means what? Competitive pricing means what? Okay. That means that prices will be cheap. Now, only with the word otherwise, you may be confused. Some of you may be confused. Yeah. Otherwise means in the other way. And if it was not international trade, if we did not have international trade, we would not have all the products, all the services that we need. Okay. So that's why otherwise in the other way as a result of this kind of collocation okay because of international trade the market is becoming efficient uh, now degree delegation these words uh, you can search it up but they don't make any sense in this context hmm. all good all right three by three next one Steven Pinker, a cognitive psychologist best known for his book, so he wrote a book, The Language Instinct, Dash Music Auditory Cheesecake, an exquisite confection crafted to tickle the sensitive spots of at least six of our mental faculties. Hmm. Steven Pinker, a cognitive, again, blank with the grammar, right? A cognitive psychologist best known for his book, The Language Instinct, either has called or nothing else yeah because you cannot use have for singular nouns you cannot use calling here mm, that has called music auditory cheesecake an exquisite confection crafted to tickle the sensitive spots we need a verb okay proper verb if it vanished from our species he said vanished means disappear the rest of our lifestyle would be dash unchanged, would be virtually unchanged. Again, collocation, okay? Virtually unchanged, you have to memorize it, yeah? Means, virtually means not for real, but almost like real. Others have argued that on the dash, on the whole, on the contrary, they all make sense. 
but you cannot say on the end or on the top okay these two don't it's either in the end or at the end uh, or at the top so on the contrary or on the whole contrary means opposite whole means altogether on the dash music along with art and literary literature is part of what peop what makes people human its absence would have a brutalizing effect Hmm. Now, this is interesting again because um, this is giving you an opposite meaning. Okay, now how do we know it's opposite? Because here, Steven Pinker is saying nothing is changed, our lifestyle would be virtually unchanged, and others say its absence would have a brutalizing effect. So they are saying two opposite things, isn't it? That's why contrary, okay? Contrary means opposite. Philip Ball, a British science writer, and and dash music enthusiast okay very simple rule and means we need something that sounds with a e i o u okay either ambitious or avid now what do we know uh, pretentious and presumptuous even if you don't know the meaning don't worry because Anne has ruled out that those two words philip ball a british science writer and an avid music enthusiast comes down somewhere in the middle. Avid means they 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 are like avid learner. Okay. Avid learner means they're always learning. Avid music enthusiast means they're always doing one thing or the other. Okay. They're not stopping themselves. They don't sit quietly. He says music is dash in our auditory. Music is ingrained. Is we are not a computer which where we install the music, isn't it? we are humans so we in we are ingrained in our auditory music is ingrained means it's it's kind of installed but as we are not computers we cannot install it so we ingrain okay that's another word for install we have a music instinct as much as a language instinct and we cannot get rid of language music there we go all good nice job yeah so how did we do this one we said, okay, she, Steven Pinker is a singular person, so we have to use has. Then here, virtually unchanged is collocation. On the contrary, they are contradicting these uh, things. Uh, they're saying two opposite things. Then here, avid, I understood the vocabulary. And ingrained also, we need to understand the vocabulary. Okay, plus we have to see ingrained in is a better collocation. Please go ahead and practice more and more of this. You will definitely find some challenging questions and you can watch my previous videos on reading tasks as well. If you are new to our channel, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video so that I know I did a good job. If you want more of these lessons, comment down below and I'll try to be more active in the future. All the contact details are in the description below if you want to call us for the toolkit. In our toolkit, we have all the structured videos, all the templates given out to you. And you can watch that with those videos and get help for the PTE preparation. The website that we use for this video was milestonestudy.com.au. You can sign in there using Viber and make sure you are utilizing all the resources in the best time possible. Once you subscribe to our VIP access, you will get unlimited mock tests. You can do as many mock tests as you want, sectional or full mock tests. You will get score and the score analysis as well. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. This is Anusha.